Oi, my brothers, welcome back to another video, man. We'll try, we'll try to keep this short and sweet, yeah. But first and foremost, if you're new, feel free to subscribe, drop a like. Once again, man, you guys are killing it. You guys are killing it with the reviews, man. I appreciate it so much. But yeah, man, you guys like my thumbnail. Yeah, it's from it's from the Godfather, baby. Yeah, it's not personal, it's just business. That should be. Ten Hag's motto, that should be Ten Hag's stance for this up and coming season. Because if it isn't, it's not looking good. It's, it's not looking good at all. Like yesterday, I'm guessing everybody saw that report yesterday. And that's why like it made me think, yo, I need to make a video on this. The report that came out yesterday, which, which said some Manchester United players don't feel that comfortable playing the way that Ten Hag wants to play. And they want him to change it up for Liverpool. That is... The biggest alarm bell to any Manchester United fan. Because, like, history repeats itself. It's literally a repeat of what happened last year. And I remember when it happened last year, I was like, there's no way this is true. It must be a fake report. When the report came out that these players are refusing to play the way that Ralph Ranić wanted to play. Ralph Ranić came in. He wanted to implement the whole gig and pressing philosophy. He wanted to do the whole 4 triple two. Four triple two meant some players would have to play in positions that they're not really accustomed to. Players would actually have to show some fight off the ball, something they're not accustomed to. And you could see after what one two games, they all down tools. They all down tools. Like there were even days when there were even sorry games where we were playing the four triple two, but nobody was nobody was sticking to their position. Nobody was playing by the principles of that formation, or even. Ralph Ranić's principles as a coach. And then it forced Ralph Ranić to play a formation that all of them are accustomed to, a formation that plays to their strengths. And the worst part, the worst part about it is the fact that this Manchester United squad doesn't have the quality. So even when you play to their strengths, it's not as if you start winning and you start bopping teams off the park. Nah, you play to their strengths and they still look shit. So basically, it's it's a lose-lose situation. You try to play your way, they'll down tools. You play to their strengths, they're not good enough. And he wasn't he wasn't joking. I'll be so honest with you guys. Like I remember so many people lost their shit when he started talking about the open heart surgery and how Manchester United, if they want to reach the heights of Liverpool, Manchester City, it might be six, seven, eight, nine, ten players. It might be. And everybody was like, no, 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 we've got some quality players and this and that. I'll always say this, yeah, you can have quality players, but if they don't have that mentality, they're bang average. They're bang average. Like everybody had this obsession. Oh, player A is good because he's technically sound. That don't mean shit. Some of the best players in the game have not even been technically amazing, but they've had that fight. They've had that mentality to go out and prove themselves week in, week out and try and elevate their game. Manchester United, we don't have that. We really don't. We really don't. And there's so many players that I had stocks in where I was like, I've seen enough of you at previous clubs. I've seen little glimpses at Manchester United. I'll buy stocks into you. But when I watch players perform the way they performed against Brighton, the way they performed against Brentford, like, yo, Brentford was embarrassing. It was the most embarrassing shit I've ever seen in my life. When we went 1-0 down, everybody's heads went. Everybody's heads were down. Everybody accepted defeat. And it could have been more than four. It could have been more than four. And the best way to summarise it is, last year when Manchester United got battered home and away to Manchester City, to Liverpool, you could make a case that Manchester United lost because those teams are more superior than ours. Those teams have better quality players than Manchester United. Bro, Manchester United lost to Brentford and Brighton, not because Brentford and Brighton have better starting 11s or they've got better players in attack. They wanted it more. Sit down, rewatch the game. Both Brighton and Brentford wanted the game more. They fought more for those three points. They were more hungry. They were more motivated. Manchester United just went out of there to catch a tan. I'll forever say this. They caught a tan in Manny. They came down to London and caught a tan in London. So I'll be honest with you guys. Like, when I saw that report, I was like, please. I was like, please. Like, when I saw it under Ralph, I was like, 
Ralph was only here for six months. He's an interim. You don't know what the future holds. And I took it. I took it on the chin. I was like, it's worrying the fact that they've down tools and they've decided that they don't want to play a certain way. But it is what it is. Like, you don't know what the future holds because Ralph will be gone in six months. Ten Hag is a man that I want to succeed. I really do. Like, I'll back this guy to the death of me. But the fact that, what, midway, like, we're only, like, what, midway through the week onto game week three, and these reports are beginning to come out. They're not comfortable playing his way. They don't want to play his way. They want the more pragmatic approach. They want to they wanna, they wanna go back to playing off intuition. Because I've always said it. These players only ever shined when they played off intuition under Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Which means just go out there and play your game. Go out there and show me what you're capable of. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, psh, you live to fight another day. And yo, it's no surprise we never ever really won anything under Oli. It's no surprise Oli's last season at Manchester United was probably one of the worst ever. And Ten Hag, man, he needs to be ruthless, man. Like, the best of managers that walk into shit squads, shit broken squads, you have to be ruthless. It's sink or swim. I've been saying this ever since Ten Hag walked in. It's sink or swim. You test these players. You demand certain things of them. You ask them to play by your principles. The ones that can do it, they'll swim. The ones that can't, they'll sink. And if they sink, you get rid of them. You get rid of them. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter how much they're getting paid. It doesn't matter what they've done for Manchester United a year or two ago. If you can't give me what I want of you, it's time for you to leave. And that's the problem with Manchester United. Will he be able to do that? Like, will he be able to walk into the board and be like, listen, I don't want Bruno Fernandes. I don't want Harry Maguire. I don't want Luke Shaw. I don't want Scott McTominay. I don't want Fred. I don't want Cristiano Ronaldo. Will the board back him? I don't know. And if they don't, then I'll be honest with you guys. The future isn't looking that good. It really isn't. It'll probably look good in moments. Everybody would get optimistic. Everybody would get back on board. But in terms of the long-term project, if he if the board doesn't trust him to make the key decisions in the team, then he's just going to join that list of all the other managers that came to Manchester United, tried to implement their own philosophy, but they came across one too many hurdles that they couldn't jump over. And I need him to be ruthless, man. I really do. Because if he's ruthless and it doesn't work out, at least his image is intact. He won't go down as a puppet. He as a puppet, sorry. He won't go down as a manager that came and bent over for these players and then they dashed him under the bus. Because yo, they've shown we will dash you under the bus over the most pathetic of reasons. Don't play to my strengths and I'll down tools. Don't. Don't play me in my favourite position and I'll down tools. Deploy the wrong play style and I'll down tools. Don't let me finish 90 minutes and I'll down tools. But they've shown it. They've shown it, man. And I don't want him. I don't want him to go down the same route. I really don't. So, like, Liverpool will lose. Here's the best way for me to put it. Liverpool will lose, yeah, whether we put the first team or the C team. But I'd rather see the C team. I really would. I'd rather see the fringe players, the players that don't really get that many minutes. Why? Because those players will go out at Old Trafford with a point to prove. Because they don't know when next they're going to play. Donny van der Beek, if he starts against uh, Liverpool, he doesn't know when next he's going to play. He might play in, in a month's time in the Carabao, for example. He'll go out there and give you 100%. The younger players, the ones that are not the most experienced, They'll go out there and give you 100% because, like I said earlier on, Manchester United are not losing because of a lack of quality. Manchester United are losing because of a lack of fight. So if Donny comes in, I doubt he'll be able to give you 100% fight for a player that hasn't played that much. But Donny coming in and showing 70% fight is still more than these players showing 0%. You see where I'm coming from? 70% fight against the Liverpool team that will give 100% is not good enough, but it's better than zero. It really is. It's better than zero. And that's what Ten Hag needs to do, man, because some of these players have shown, like, it's not as if he's been in the job for four years and now they're beginning to town tools. This is a man that's been in the job for three months. 
first game of the season, all eyes on him, and they drop a performance like that. And then a week later, you're thinking, you know what, it's time for you to rectify your mistake. You got schooled at home, away to Brentford, put in a good performance. I've always said it. This season, I couldn't care less. I couldn't care less about uh, results and the final scoreline. I'm more invested in performances. The performance against Brentford was the most embarrassing shit you'll ever see as a Manchester United fan. Bro, if that's the case, let them pay the price. None of them, not a single player that played against Brentford is worthy of playing on Monday. Not a single one. I'd probably say the only one that does play because the backup option isn't the best is David De Gea. And he was, and he was one of the main culprits. He had a horrible game. But with David De Gea, I won't even say David De Gea showed a lack of fight or David De Gea has down tools. No, it's just David De Gea is being asked to do things which he doesn't specialise in. But David De Gea is another player that needs to be moved on. But at the moment, he's the only option we have. Everybody else from right back to striker, every single one of them was poor. None of them have the right to start on Monday based on the way they performed last Saturday. And it's probably the best way to send out a message to these players because I've always said it. So many people always pay too much attention into players being dropped. Like, oh, it might, it might destroy them mentally. It might demoralise them. They might become uh, unmotivated in a sense. Nah, man. Ballers, good players, dropping them motivates them more than anything because they'll be asking themselves like, yo, why am I getting dropped? Why am I not starting? Why did player A take my position? Why am I doing cameo minutes? It rallies them up because the next time they play, they'll go out and give you 110%. They'll go out there with the intentions of sending out a statement. I want to be back in the starting 11. That's what the best of players do. That's why they always say competition is so good. Football is a squad game. If everybody is competing with one another in, in a healthy way, it's nothing but benefits. It will only benefit your team. It will only benefit your camp. It will only benefit your manager. Bro, Manchester United has no fight. None of them have fight. Not a single one of them. One nil down to Brentford, everybody accepted defeat. And then it just got worse and worse and worse. And then towards the end, everybody just started playing their own game. All principles went into the bin. That's it. We're playing our own game. The problem with Manchester United is none of them can play their own game because that whole team, nobody's on the same wavelength. That's what he needs to do, man. And I've said it. I'd rather dedicate this whole season to exposing the frauds, to exposing the players that don't have the fight, they don't have the mentality to play for Manchester United, than focusing on improving them. Because I get it. He walks into the job. He's definitely had a conversation with Ralph Ranić in terms of who's good and who isn't, who's to be trusted and who isn't. But at the end of the day, Ten Hag is his own man. He's not Ralph Ranić. He's probably walked into the job thinking, cool, let me see how these players re react to me, to my training method, to my coaching, to my principles. Let me see how they react. You never know. They might buy into it. It might be a case of, they didn't buy into Ranix, but they'll buy into Ten Hogs and I'll be able to get something out of them. So I get it. I get the whole, he walks in, he puts his arm across every single one of them's shoulders. He shows faith. He shows trust. And based off how they performed in the first half of preseason, it was looking good. It was looking really good. But yo, like these players have shown when the going gets tough and it matters. We're not talking about no Liverpool playing against Liverpool's under-12s and beating them 4-0, playing up against Australian farmers and hammering them. Nah, 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 nah. I'm talking when the going gets tough, when it's the Premier League and it matters most, they all down tools. Every single one of them because they've got no fight in them. And like I said, I would rather dedicate this season to just exposing them because some of them have shown they don't want to learn. They really don't. They don't want to learn. They don't want to elevate their game. They don't want to be amongst the world's best. Hell no, man. I've made it. I've made it, man. I'm getting paid 350K. I've made it. I'm getting paid 250K. And I've done nothing in the game. There's no club out there that pays some of the bums that we have 
250k. And then when you look at their CV, they've done nothing in the game. What have they done? They won a Europa League a few years ago. They won a, it was a Carabao. They won a Carabao a few years ago. Is that it? That doesn't warrant 250k. It doesn't warrant 250k at Manchester United or at any other club. I still can't get my head around Manchester City paying Jao Cancelo 90k. 90k, a player that you could arguably make a case is the best fullback in the league. If not, definitely top three. 90k. Week in, week out, he shows fight. He's got that mentality. He's motivated. He wants to go out there and win. Man United are out here paying. Man United are out here paying man them 250, 350, 400, 150k to a player where if he was to leave Manchester United, he'd be lucky to get 50% of that. Based on his mentality, based on his quality, based on his attitude. These players feel like they've made it, man. So I'm more than happy. I'm more than happy to finish 10th and expose every single one of them. The ones that don't want to be here. The mercenaries. The ones that are just here for a payday. Because they know, they know they're not getting this money anywhere else. They're not going to get that freedom to go out and drop a stinker. To go out and drop a 0 out of 10 week in, week out. Yo, any other top club. Any other top club. You drop a stinker week in, week out. Boy, you're chilling on that bench. You're chilling on that bench until you give me a reason to start you again. And that means you're going to have to give me 150% in training. You're going to have to be a standout performer in training just for me to think about giving you 45 minutes a game. Manchester United last year, like, <laughs> yo, it reached a point where week in, week out, zero out of 10, zero out of 10, but they continue to start. Why? Because we don't have the squad depth. We don't have the squad depth, man. Marcus Rashford is poor. Like, let's just use him as an example. Marcus Rashford is poor. That guy has lost interest in football, man. That guy is a brand. He's a superstar now. Marcus Rashford has built his name of things that he's done off the football pitch. He'll forever be glamorized. He'll forever be loved. He don't care about Manchester United. He really don't. You could tell from his performances. You could tell from his fight. You could tell from his attitude, from his mentality. But the thing is, cool, we drop him, but for who? For Alanga, as much as Marcus Rashford is poor, the drop-off is ridiculous from Rashford to Alanga. It really is. And that's why Manchester United have never, ever had that luxury of benching players that are not good enough. But now I've reached the stage where, yo, be bench him for the C-team player. Bench him for Garnacho. Bench him for Alanga, for Hannibal, for anybody. I'd rather see players out there that actually care, that actually want to fight. But if you, if you lose, you lose. If you lose, at least I tell myself, like, yo, we lost because we had a Hannibal on the left, for example, or an Elanga on the left. They don't have the quality, but these players gave 110%, man. They always do. The best of teams, like, for example, I don't really agree with the whole, oh, passion, desire, over technical ability. You know, I want both. The best of teams have both. But with Manchester United, it's one of the two. So pick and choose. You either get passion desire from your McTominays and all of these idiots or you get technical ability but no fight that's not the case it's not one or the other the best of teams the most successful of teams they've got both man they've got technicians they've got quality players but these players also have that mentality mentality of going out and giving you 100 percent we don't have that so if i have to pick one of the two at the moment give me the passion give me the desire Give me it. At the moment, give it to me. Besides McTominay. Because, yo, he's pants. Like, he is pants. I trust a Hannibal more than him. I trust a Jimmy Garner more than him, even though he's gone. I trust a Donny van der Beek. There's a lot of players in this Manchester United camp that can come into these, that can take the slots of the first team players and show more. Manchester United is the only club in the world where I've seen the players dictate how they play, what formation they play, and who starts. I've never, ever seen this in my life. I've always said the system dictates who starts and who doesn't. Manchester United, it's like a, it's not even favoritism anymore. It's like the starting 11 just picks itself. And I saw a report. I saw a report, which I hope is wrong, but it says that certain players in their contracts have a clause where 
if they don't play a certain amount of games slash minutes a season, Manchester United will have to pay them to compensate for that. The club isn't going to want to just give out free money. So you know what? If Mark Rashford has to play 50% of games, so be it. He can stink it out, but I'd rather he plays 50% of games than me paying him. And that's why Manchester United is not a serious club or a commercial club, man. All we care about is finances. All we care about is revenue. So if there's a way of us cutting costs by making player A, player B, player C start, then so be it. Because in the long run, it's going to save me money, man. And that's all Manchester United care about. But with Ten Hag now, man, I hope I hope he sticks to his principles. Yeah? Because Ranić didn't. And I'm not saying, oh, that like Ranić was a puppet and he bought into it, man. I'll just be real. And I think Ranić knew he was leaving in six months. So you know what? Save myself the headache. Ten Hag has put pen to paper. He's here for a few years. Stick to your principles. If that means player A, player B are going to become unhappy, so be it. They're not the first or the last. Pep, when he walked into Manchester City, ruthless, dropped Joe Hart from day one. The entire fan base was against him. They were all asking questions like, what are you doing? Mikel Arteta, ruthless. The Mesut Ozil thing, yeah, there's a lot of politics behind it, but still ruthless enough to drop their best creator, their best player, because Ozil and the Arteta done well. Ruthless enough to drop the club captain in Aubameyang, especially at a time where Arsenal didn't really have anybody else to play up front besides the Lacazette. Other managers would have probably given, given Aubameyang the season and then in the summer phased him out. Nah, 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 nah. You don't want to play by my principles? You want to be a rotten egg within the camp? You want to have a bad influence on these young players? You want to show a poor mentality? You don't want to go out there and fight for the club? No problem. I'll phase you out. I'll phase you out. I haven't got a problem with it. If that means performances drop off and quality in the final third drops off, then so be it. It is what it is. It's a short-term L, but it's a long-term W. And that's why I say once again, this season should just be dedicated to that. Ten Hag, be ruthless enough to drop anybody that doesn't show fight, that doesn't, that doesn't show the right attitude or the right mentality. And if that means replacing them with a player that possesses a quarter of their quality, so be it. At least in a year's time, we'll know. We'll know who we need to replace and who's actually good enough to stick around. And I hope it works out for him, man. I really do. Like, at the moment, you're seeing United linked with a few players. It's funny. It's funny, like, the stance two, three weeks ago was United have to sell before they can buy. But now there's worldwide talk of protests, uh, fans boycotting games. There's abuse all over social media aimed at the Glazers. And now all of a sudden, the peas are there. The guap has come out of nowhere, man. Man United are not doing this pathetic two, three months to negotiate a deal. Hell no. How much do you want? Cool. I'll put it on the table. And it shows when you apply pressure, you get what you want. But I'll be honest, like whoever we get, Casemiro or whoever, yeah, it's looking like panic buyers at the moment. But the bar is so on the floor that no matter how many question marks I have over Casemiro from a ball playing point of view, he's still better than Fred. He's still better than McTominay. Defensively, he's probably second best in the world after Rodri. So it is an improvement. It really is. It will benefit Ten Hag. You bring in another winner. Yeah, you bring in another winner, man. You look at this Man United camp. Who's a winner? Who's a winner? Put your agendas and put your bias aside. Who's a winner in this team? Cristiano Ronaldo is the number one winner. He's won everything in the game. Rafael Varane has won everything there is in the game. David De Gea. He hasn't won as much as those two, but David De Gea has won. All three of those have been part of title-winning teams. They've been part of successful camps. Amongst ballers, amongst winners. And now they're looking at players 51st minute and they're jogging back. They've got no interest. They've got no interest to sprint back. No interest whatsoever. That's what it is, isn't it? That's that's the camp. And you have to get rid of them, man. I'll be so honest with you guys. There's a lot of players in this Man United team that just need to be, they need to be phased away. And it's not even a case of giving them one more chance under Ten Hag. Nah, 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 nah. They've shown on the previous managers they're not good enough. 
And trust me, nothing is going to change. You might get one, two months out of them because it's a new manager is in town, but eventually they'll go back to their old roots. We've seen it. We've seen it under so many managers. They're not good enough. They're not good enough. Some of them are technically good enough, but they don't have that fight. They don't have that mentality. They don't have that desire. You really don't. And at the end of the day, if you want to be one of the best players, if you want to play for a club like Man United, you need to have both. You need to have quality, but you also need to have fight. At the moment, like I said, it's one of the two. He needs, to, he needs to stop trusting players like Harry Maguire, like Luke Shaw, Scott McTominay, Marcus Rashford. Bruno has fight, but Bruno has no quality. If he can get Bruno to go back to playing the way he played in the beginning of the preseason, then we'll have to persevere with him for now until we get a competent enough replacement. But yo, if Bruno is going out there performing the way he's performed in the last two games and ignoring all principles, Going back to hero ball, but oh, bench him. Bench him. That's the only way to teach some of these players. If they don't learn, then that tells you everything about their mentality. And that means, yo, just ship them away. So this season is going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. But I just hope it's a season that we can look back on in two years and be like, this was the season that exposed everybody. And then Manchester United were ruthless enough to get rid of them. Regardless of who they are, fan favorite, I don't care. 400k, I don't care. That's what I hope. If it's going to be a case of, nah, you're a commercial asset to a club, nah, we pay you a lot of money and we're going to persevere with you and persist and start you week in, week out just for those factors, then we'll forever be pissed. We will forever be pissed. But yeah, man, that's that's like what, 20, 27 minutes? Big up everybody that tunes into it, man. As always, I appreciate it. Once again, if you're new, make sure to subscribe. Drop a like. If you're already subscribed, then you know how much I appreciate you, man. Make sure you drop the video a like. And yeah, man, next video will probably be a Man United Liverpool review.